we talked about this earlier in the mm-hmm. first segment. The Brooklyn Nets. Yes. And the NBA playoffs. Right now, the Brooklyn Nets are, like you said, they're the, the favorites for the title right now, right? In some sports books. Probably in some sports, sports books. In mo- yeah. Probably in most sports books. Right. And I'm going to be quite honest. I don't know why. And this is, And I have two reasons why I don't feel like they're going to eat. They're not going to win the East. Okay. I'll give them the second round, but I don't think they're going to win the East. You think they're going to get bounced in the second round? I think they're going to get bounced in the second I've round. I've got it here. Go ahead. All right. First off, and they both go together. Number one reason why I don't think the Brooklyn Nets will make it past second round is chemistry. James Harden walked in there and basically took over the team. Okay. He has taken over and he's showing that, yeah, he can do it. He can lead a team in the regular season. <laughs> when have we seen this before out of James Harden? Oh, wait, his entire career. The guy has always been a phenomenal regular season guy, right? Mm-hmm. Put up those numbers, put up MVP numbers. Really dominate and show off the team. When does James Harden typically falter? In the playoffs. Okay. Which leads to the second reason why this team isn't going to win the East. Not only are you going to have chemistry issues, those chemistry issues are going to come from the fact that their other star players aren't going to play. Mm-hmm. Blake Griffin will be hurt by the time the playoffs start. Kevin Durant might not come back. And Kyrie Irving will have something that will go on. He has had a very unfortunate 2020-2021. And things happen typically in threes. And it feels like more stuff keeps happening to him, unfortunately. And the way that this trajectory is, in my eyes, mm-hmm. he's not going to be here in the playoffs either. Okay. So this will be another playoffs that he'll miss, just like he missed in Boston as well as in Cleveland. So this will be the third team. Third team that he's missed the playoffs with. Things come, it happens in threes. Uh-huh. This is the third team that he'll miss the playoffs in. Like I said, we don't know what about Kevin Durant. He's he's been out how many games now? <laughs> like, he's it, been out before the All Star break. Yes. So he's been gone for a bit. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, they have James Harden, and they just got Blake Griffin, who dunked for the first time last night since in twenty in a game since twenty nineteen. And it was one of those uh, Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs type dunks mm-hmm. that was. Zero flash, just a yeah, type, you know, old school Nintendo video game dunks. Two points. So, two points. Exactly. And so because of that, that's the two reasons right there. I don't see it. They're not going to have chemistry. And the reason why they ain't going to have chemistry is because they ain't going to have players. Well, I would say I agree with the chemistry part. The reason why they're not going to have chemistry is because their players will not have played much in the regular season. This reminds me of the Clippers last season. When they got bounced by the Denver Nuggets, one of the things that they talked about as excuse was that they had very little time with all of their stars on the court in order to gel together both on offense and on defense. And it's looking now that like Brooklyn is not going to have that. I mean, you have, like you mentioned Kevin Durant's injury. He's been out, seems like it's been like a month. You have Kyrie Irving who's in and out either by getting nicked up here and there or – for his own personal stuff or social political stuff, whatever it is. Which he's out three more games three more now. Three more games, uh-huh. Leaving James Harden and Blake Griffin to lead this team beginning tonight against the Utah Jazz, Monday night. So they aren't going to have enough time to get the chemistry together in that regard. That's one reason why I feel like it's – I still want – I'm not ready to say they won't win the East, but that aspect of it is going to make it that much more difficult, even if they do win the East, to where if they do – by the time they get to the finals, I mean, they're, they're going to be probably ex- – they're going to be re- – they're not, they're not going to be as formidable as they should be were, the guy, were these guys healthy for the majority of the season and playing together. Roughly 12 days ago, he got more imaging on his injured hamstring. Mm-hmm. And Nash, about five days ago, uh, based from uh, Malika Andrews from uh, ESPN, stated that Katie's improving, but his return is still mm-hmm. weeks yeah. with an S away. They're not winning the championship okay, without Kevin Durant. But who's going to beat them, though? Because well, who do you have faith in to beat them? Do you have faith in Milwaukee? I don't believe that you do. I do. do no, no. I got one team, though. You, okay. Do you have faith in Philadelphia with Doc Rivers? Maybe. Depends on Embiid, who's out with his knee injury as well. I would look at, again, Miami. Like, they're sitting there, what, right in the five spot. Nobody's paying too much attention to them. <laughs> Problem with so so this is if Brooklyn stays the course and finishes at the number two seed, uh-huh. they're gonna and if everything stays the way that it does. Yeah. They'll play the Knicks in the first round. Uh-huh. They'll win that. That's no problem. Mm-hmm. The next round will either be Milwaukee or Boston. 
Milwaukee. I don't think they can beat either one of those two. Okay. And uh, the problem with Boston right now is is Boston. So I talked about this mm-hmm. just recently yes. on my episode, which I think this was probably one of my better takes of them all. Is that I think we're at the point where it's now time for Brad Stevens to go. Mm-hmm. I like Brad Stevens a lot. I do. But I think we're, we've hit that we've hit that wall. We hit well, the ceiling. See, here's what I understand now about NBA coaches. NBA coaches is not about X's and O's because if you get an interview for an NBA job as a head coach, they already know you know X's and O's. Being an NBA coach is all about being. It's all about understanding who's the best psychologist. Yep. Who's the who's the best manipulator? That's yep. why Phil Jackson was so successful. I mean, yeah, he had Kobe, MJ, Shaq, but he was the best psychologist the game had ever seen. He knew how to. I guess, manipulate players on a psychological, emotional, and spiritual level. Right. And that's something that a Brad Stevens, who was successful at Butler as a coach, comes into the NBA and thinks that it's all about X's and O's. If I put my guys in the right spot, if they learn my scheme, we will be successful. And they've had success. Yeah. They've been to how many Eastern Conference finals? But to Three really, of the last four. Right. But to really get over the hump, to really win not a championship, but multiple championships – it's all about the mind. It's all about psychology. And that's something that he probably doesn't excel at because you're sitting there with two young horses in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown just ready to be even better than what they are now. They're both all-stars. And a he, veteran, even though he's hurt consistently, right. Kimball Walker uh-huh. and Marcus Smart, who's a pretty still a really good defender at his age. Right. Yeah, he has all of that. And, and that's what I'm saying. He's hit, I think he's hit a ceiling. He's going to have to leave. He's going to have to go for, get another job. Mm-hmm. And he needs to come back as a head coach and take over for somebody else's ceiling issue, mm-hmm. and then he will be propelled. I feel like he'll probably be the next Rick Carlisle, mm-hmm. um, and that's what happened to him. Rick Carlisle lost his job in Detroit because he couldn't get past the ceiling. Larry Brown took him the next year, won a championship. Mm-hmm. You know, Dale Harris had the same thing with Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson has always been a ceiling breaker, so of course it made <laughs> sense for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Avery Johnson had that happen to him. It was Rick Carlisle who had lost his job in Detroit. Took Avery Johnson's job in Dallas mm-hmm. and broke the ceiling and won that championship. Did, what, was Carlisle ever the coach of the Pacers? I think he did get up the Pacers gig at one point. I, mean, I looked he had it some up good regular quick. seasons, but didn't quite break through. I think. Yeah, it, yeah. I, 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 I am assuming just, yes in that. Yeah. But then adding after that, you have yes, he was. He was assistant in actually. He went to the Pacers after Detroit mm-hmm. after he lost the job in Detroit. So oh three oh seven, he was with the Pacers, mm-hmm. and then he took over the Mavs job and was able to get them to a championship uh, after taking over for Avery Johnson, who was winning 50 games a year. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, he was also the coach of the team that lost as eight seed to mm-hmm. – lost the one seed to eight seed. That's what it is. X's and O's can get you 50 wins. Yes. But psychology and manipulation, that's champion. That's what gets you um, – you got to break unless, the ceiling. Unless you have like a LeBron or you get a Kevin Durant, somebody like that, Steph Curry. Correct. Right. And that's, and that's going to be the thing that's going to hold him back is – He's not going to be able to he, – he, he's not going to get them past that. And so, for me, with Brooklyn, that's the issue I see. I don't think this really going to be a Nash thing. Mm-hmm. Um, unless they see a bunch of injuries in the East on the way. Um, like, Embiid doesn't come back. Boston loses one of their guys. Mm-hmm. Giannis gets hurt. Kind of like what Golden State saw their first year. Mm-hmm. I don't see – I don't see them getting past anybody in the second round. Now, like I said, right now they have the Knicks – but that's right now. If we have the play in, there's a potential chance that Chicago or Indiana can take it, which I don't think they'll beat them. Or Charlotte, I don't think they'll beat them either. If Boston drops, that may be a problem for them. How confident are you that Brooklyn won't get to the Eastern Conference Finals? I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident right now. Okay. Are you going to put a wager on this, Jimmy? Because I know that you're really bought in on this and you love wagering. Would you like to throw a wager on this, Jimmy? We can do this on the show. Okay. It depends on what the wager is. Dinner. Because, again, I don't have 100% confidence. Dinner. No. You don't want to do food? Well, I'm still owed a dinner. Actually. I do. I still owe you a but dinner. That's beside the point. It's, so, it's coming. It's, it's Actually, no, it's coming today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have been thinking about it. I'm like, dude, I need to just send this over. And every time I think about it, something comes up. So I'm glad you are reminded. Mm-hmm. I am going to pay Jamie today. How about... Let's increase the... Let's make it a cash bet. Just increase the cash bet. Let's say... You want to double or nothing on that one then? Because that one was a twenty dollar bet. We could let's all right. Let's let's double or nothing. Let's say fifty. Perfect. Fifty dollars, double or nothing. Yep. Shake on it. All right, it's on there. So Brooklyn, Brooklyn is not going to make the Eastern Conference Brooklyn Finals. Brooklyn is going to make the Eastern Conference Finals. And the funny thing is, you're nine hundred percent certainty, no. and I am in one hundred percent certainty. <laughs> which means I'm probably going to lose this bet, and I'm going to get you three meals. But that's not that's, that's not a bad thing, and I'm not going to complain. So let's see what happens.